Hi, this is Nick from PrimeLoops.com. Today I want to show you the new step sequencing feature in Ableton Live 8. This is a new workflow improvement that's been added to the program. I've seen a bit of misunderstanding about it on various forums from people who might understandably have been expecting a traditional step sequencer, like an XOX interface where you can actually dial in notes with buttons on a grid. Well, the way the step sequencer works in Live 8 is a bit different, and it's actually more intuitive, I think, in the context of Live 8's note view. So as you can see, I have a drum rack loaded up here with four sounds from our Minimal and Tech House drums pack. And I'm actually just triggering these on my QWERTY keyboard here. And if you want to change the octave that you're playing on on your keyboard, you could just hit the Z or X keys. And as you can see down here, the octave is changing. So you want to be on the octave C2 to D3 in order to trigger the first cells in the drum rack. So once you have a drum rack or a similar interface loaded up with a few sounds in it, the next thing to do is to create a clip in the track view. So I'll just double click in this first clip here, and as you can see it brings up just my four drum sounds. So like I said, the new step sequencing feature is a workflow improvement. But instead of using that XOX style interface, you're actually step sequencing within the familiar piano roll view here that's existed in Live since version 1. Before Live 8, if you wanted to dial in some notes here in order to get a pattern going, you generally just start the clip playing like so, and then start clicking in notes. With Live 8, you can do this without the mouse, and a little bit more intuitively. We'll look at this in both a rhythmic and a melodic context, but let's start with drums. Now the way step sequencing works here is that you'll first want to activate your monitor button right here so that it turns blue. The next thing you're going to want to do is just focus yourself in this grid right here. And if you hit the left and right keys, you'll notice that you can actually move on to the next step in the sequence here, which is indicated by this little orange bar. So I'm going to focus on the first hit here. And notice that we have the grid set to 16th notes. So every one of these grid divisions is a 16th note. Since I have the monitor button turned on, I can now trigger my sounds in real time, figuring out which one I want to sequence first. I'll start with the kick drum. Now since I know I want my kick drum to be on a regular quarter note pattern, that is just a four to the floor beat, I'll right click here and set my grid to quarter notes. That way we only have four quarter notes to one bar. Now if I want to quickly sequence in four kick drum beats right in a row, all I have to do is hold down whatever key triggers my kick drum, and then hit the right arrow key. And then I release, and there you go, I've got my kick drum. So I'll just keep doing that. I'll hold down the kick drum, hit right arrow, do it again, and again. And there we go, we have a nice four to the floor kick drum. So let me just recap that for you. First create a clip up here in the track view. Activate your little monitor button right here. Click anywhere that you want to start sequencing from in this little track. Say, I want to start sequencing right here. Choose the sound that you want to enter into the grid. I'll put a clap in this time. Hold that down, as you can see I'm holding it down right here, and hit the right arrow key. Now I want to add some percussion here, except I want those to be on various 16th notes within this pattern. So again, I'll just right click, hit 16th notes, and now it brings up a more narrowly chopped up grid for me to work with here. So here are my two percussion sounds. So I want this sound to trigger on the first three sixteenth notes. So I'll focus back here, hold down the note, hit right arrow, three times in a row. Then I want to skip a couple sixteenth notes, so I hit that right arrow a couple more times, and I want to enter this higher percussion right here. And there we go. Of course, when you have your notes entered into the note view down here, you can always drag them around as usual and make changes any way you want to. Say I want to move the clap over here, duplicate it, making sure that it's on the 2 and the 4. Now again, some people are confused about why Ableton added this feature to live. And the point here is that you can quickly scroll through the entire pattern using mouseless operation and dial in a few notes, just by using the left and right arrows to move around the interface here. You can even change how narrowly or coarsely defined your note grid is with a keyboard shortcut. So you can truly put the mouse aside and do this completely with the keyboard, which is much faster. The shortcut for changing the grid setting is Command or Control if you're on a PC, and then hit 1 or 2. If you hold down Command 2, 
you can see that it makes the grid more coarsely defined, that is, it goes to longer note values. If you hit Command-1, you can see that the grid gets more narrowly defined. And Ableton Live will allow you to get pretty narrow here. As you can see, I'm already down to one sixteen thousand three hundred and eighty-fourth triplet note. So really, the sky is the limit here. Now, as you can see, I'm in triplet mode here, and if you want to turn that on and off, just hit Command or Control-3, and that'll switch between dealing with triplets and more regularly define note divisions such as quarter notes or half notes. Now another cool thing about this step sequencing feature is that it will actually measure the velocity with which you're hitting the notes. Since I'm using my computer keyboard to trigger these notes, obviously there won't be any velocity sensitivity. However, if I was using a MIDI keyboard, the force with which I was hitting my notes would also be measured. So if I had hit this note with less force, the velocity would have been somewhere down here, and so on. So now that we've seen step sequencing in action in a rhythmic context, let's switch over to a melodic context. I'll just delete this track and pick out a nice lead sound here. Let's go with synth lead and try out Big Saw. Now Big Saw, as you might predict, is a pretty thick sound. And it lends itself well to being played in chords. So let's go through step sequencing again, this time with this melodic sound here. I'll double click to create the default one bar length pattern. I'll bring the volume down just a bit here so that we can stack up some more sounds on top of one another without clipping the output. Now I think I want this pattern to be say four bars long. So I'll switch it over here, drag it up to four bars, drag my end marker back here, and now I'm just going to use command one and two to decide how long I want these notes to be. I think I'm going to want this to be a little coarser, say around half notes. And of course the next thing to do is turn on the monitor button down here so that when you trigger the keys they sound. And let's choose a chord to start out with. Let's start out with something straightforward like a C major. So if you already know that you want to play that C major chord in, you can of course just focus on the grid by clicking it there, holding down the chord, and then hitting the right arrow key. And now we have a well-defined C major chord here that lasts for a half note. Now say I don't know what chord I want to happen next on the second whole note. I only know that I want the bass line to work well with the bass note from the first chord, that is C3. So I use my right arrow key to move over one half note. And then I choose another bass note that sounds good coming from that C3. So I like the jump from C3 to D3, so I hold down D3 and hit right. And I'll do that for the rest of the pattern here, since I don't know what chords I want to use, but I want to work out a sequence of bass notes beforehand. So I'll right arrow over again. All right, I think I'll go with this F. And then once more, I'll go with E. So of course we now have a sequence that starts out with a fully defined triad here, but then just a few single notes after it, because I haven't yet figured out what harmony I want to use. So say I get done defining this pattern, but I want to go back over it and now fill in one or two more notes to create chords on these other steps. And that's as simple as going back with your left arrow to where you want to be and adding more notes in above the one you already added in. So say I want this to be a power chord, which is just D and then a fifth above it. So I'll just add it in just like we added all the other notes in, no problem. Move over here to the next chord, and say I want another power chord here. However, I want the top note in this power chord to last for a whole note. But a shortcut for extending one of your notes out is simply to hold it down and then hit right as many times as you need to make the note longer. So if I want to hold this high B note for a whole note, it's just a simple matter of hitting right two times instead of once. And as you can see, the note lasts for the whole note. I'll just add in another triad here, and we'll be done. And I'll hold that out for a whole note as well. One last thing that I should note before I leave you with this. If your current studio or live setup doesn't allow you to reach the computer keyboard easily, so that you're not going to be able to use the right and left arrows, you can always turn on MIDI mapping. And as you can see, when I turn that on, it exposed these two little arrow buttons down here. And you can actually map the left and right function down here in the step sequencer to any of the buttons on your MIDI controller. 
So that's a handy little shortcut in case, for instance, you play live sets where you're standing pretty far away from your laptop, but you'd still like to be able to mouse around the interface like this to build rhythms and melodies on the fly. I'll see you next time for more music production tips and tricks. Stay creative!